Soviet-made ZSU-23-4 in California. An anti-aircraft vehicle, also known as a self-propelled anti-aircraft gun or self-propelled air defense system, is a mobile vehicle with a dedicated anti-aircraft capability. The Russian equivalent of SPOG is ZSU, for Zenitnaya Samohodnaya Ustanovka. Specific weapon systems used include machine guns, autocannons, larger guns, or missiles, and some mount both guns and longer-ranged missiles. Platforms used include both trucks and heavier combat vehicles such as APCs and tanks, which add protection from aircraft, artillery, and small arms fire for front-line deployment. Anti-aircraft guns are usually mounted in a quickly traversing turret with a high rate of elevation, for tracking fast-moving aircraft. They are often in dual or quadruple mounts, allowing a high rate of fire. In addition, most anti-aircraft guns can be used in a direct fire role against surface targets to great effect. Today, missiles have largely supplanted anti-aircraft guns. A World War I, British, truck-mounted, QF 3-inch gun anti-aircraft machine guns have long been mounted on trucks, and these were quite common during World War I. A predecessor of the World War II German 88 anti-aircraft gun. The World War I German 77mm anti-aircraft gun, was truck-mounted and used to great effect against British tanks. The British QF 3-inch 20 hundred weight was mounted on trucks for use on the Western Front. Between the two world wars, the United Kingdom developed the Birch Gun, a general-purpose artillery piece on an armored track chassis capable of maintaining formation with their current tanks over terrain. The gun could be elevated for anti-aircraft use. Vickers Armstrong also developed a SPOG based on the chassis of the MK. E6 ton light tank slash Dragon medium Mark IV tractor, mounting a Vickers QF1 pom-pom gun of 40 mm. About 26 were sold to Siam and saw action as infantry support guns and AA guns during the Franco-Thai War along with 30 Vickers MK. E-type B6 ton tanks. This was probably the first track SPOG manufactured in series. Later the British also developed a version of the MK. Vi light tank armed with four machine guns that were known as light tank AAMK. I and also a twin 15mm version based on the light tank MK. V was built. Among early pre-war pioneers of self-propelled AA guns were the Germans. By the time of the war, they fielded the SD. KFC. 10 fourths and 6 halves, cargo half-tracks mounting single 20mm or 37mm AA guns. Later in the war similar German half-tracks mounted quadruple 20mm weapons. German Wirebell Wind, a 20mm Flakevierling quad mount on a Panzer IV chassis. Larger guns followed on larger trucks but these mountings generally required off-truck setup in order to unlimber the stabilizing legs these guns needed. One exception to this rule was the Italian Canoni de 9053 which was highly effective when mounted on trucks, a fit known as the Auto Canoni de 9053. The 9053 was a feared weapon, notably in the anti-tank role, but only a few hundred had been produced by the time of the armistice in 1943. Other nations tended to work on truck chassis. Starting in 1941, the British developed the en porte method of mounting an anti-tank gun on a truck. This was to prevent the weapon from being damaged by long-distance towing across rough, stony deserts, and it was intended only to be a carrying method, with the gun unloaded for firing. However, crews tended to fire their weapons from their vehicles for the mobility this method provided, with consequent casualties. This undoubtedly inspired their Morris C9-B, a Bofors 40mm AA gun mounted on a chassis derived from the Morris Quad Field Artillery Tractor Truck. Similar types, based on 3-ton lorries, were produced in Britain, Canada, and Australia, and together formed the most numerous self-propelled AA guns in British service. The US Army brought truck-towed Bofors 40mm AA guns along with truck-mounted units fitted with mechanized turrets when they sailed, first for Great Britain and then on to France. The turrets carried four. 50-inch machine guns, which were designed to be adjusted to converge at the single point where enemy aircraft were expected to appear at low altitude in conduction of strafing runs directed at large infantry and field artillery units. Interest in mobile AA turned to heavier vehicles with the mass and stability needed to easily train weapons of all sizes. Probably the desire, particularly in German service, for anti-aircraft vehicles to be armored for their own protection also assisted this trend. The concept of an armored SPOG was pioneered by Hungary during World War II by producing the 40M Nimrod based on the Luftwarnskanon van L62 Anti-2 license acquired from Sweden. Germany followed later with their Flakepanzer series. 
German World War II SPOGs include the Mobile Wagon, Wirebell Wind, Ostwind, and Chilblitz. Other forces followed with designs of their own, notably the American M16 created by mounting quadruple M2 HP Browning machine guns on an M3 half-track. The British developed their own SPOGs throughout the war mounting multiple machine guns and light cannon on various tank and armored car chassis and by 1943, the Crusader AA tanks, which mounted the Bofors 40mm gun or 2-3 Orlikon 20mm cannon. Although used during the Normandy landings, by that point German aircraft were contained by the Allies' own air forces and they were largely unneeded. Czechoslovak self-propelled anti-aircraft gun M53-59 Praga developed in the late 1950s. Flake Panzer Gepard, combining radars, fire control and 235mm guns in a new turret mounted on a Leopard chassis. Typical of more modern designs, the Tunguska M1 mounts both missiles and cannons. The introduction of jet engines and the subsequent rough doubling of aircraft speeds greatly reduced the effectiveness of the SPOG against attack aircraft. A typical SPOG round might have a muzzle velocity on the order of 1,000 meters per second and might take as long as 2 to 3 seconds to reach a target at its maximum range. An aircraft flying at 1,000 kilometers per hour is moving at a rate of about 280 meters per second. This means the aircraft will have moved hundreds of meters during the flight time of the shells, greatly complicating the aiming problem to the point where close passes were essentially impossible to aim using manual gun sights. This speed also allowed the aircraft to rapidly fly out of range of the guns, even if the aircraft passes directly over the SPOG, it would be within its firing radius for under 30 seconds. SPOG development continued through the early 1950s with ever larger guns, improving the range and allowing the engagement to take place at longer distances where the crossing angle was smaller and aiming was easier. Examples including the 40mm USM-42 Duster and the 57mm Soviet ZSU-57 II. However, both were essentially obsolete before they entered service, and found employment solely in the ground support role. The M42 was introduced to the Vietnam War to counter an expected North Vietnamese air offensive, but when this failed to materialize it was used as an effective direct fire weapon. The ZSU-57 found similar use in the Yugoslav Wars, where its high-angle fire was useful in the mountainous terrain. By the late 1950s, the U.S. Army had given up on the SPOG concept, considering all gun-based weapons to be useless against modern aircraft. This belief was generally held by many forces, and the anti-aircraft role turned almost exclusively to missile systems. The Soviet Union remained an outlier, beginning the development of a new SPOG in 1957, which emerged as the ZSU-23-4 in 1965. This system included search and track radars, fire control, and automatic gun laying, greatly increasing its effectiveness against modern targets. The ZSU-23 proved very effective when used in concert with SAMs, the presence of SAMs forced aircraft to fly low to avoid their radars, placing them within range of the ZSUs. The success of the ZSU-23 led to a resurgence of SPOG development. This was also prompted by the introduction of attack helicopters in the 1970s, which could hide behind terrain and then pop up for an attack lasting only a few tens of seconds, missiles were ineffective at low altitudes. While the helicopters would often be within range of the guns for a rapid counterattack. Notable among these later systems is the German Gepard, the first Western SPOG to offer performance equal to or better than the ZSU. This system was widely copied in various NATO forces. SPOG development continues, with many modern examples often combining both guns and short-range missiles. Examples include the Soviet-slash-Russian Tunguska M1, which supplanted the ZSU-23 in service, the newer versions of the Gepard, the Chinese Type 95 SPA, and the British Marksman turret, which can be used on a wide variety of platforms. Some forces, like the US Army and USMC have mostly foregone self-propelled guns in favor of systems with short-range infrared guided surface-to-air missiles in the N-TWQ-1 Avenger and M6 linebacker which do not require radar to be accurate and are generally more reliable and cost-effective to field, though their ability to provide ground support is more limited. The U.S. Army did use the M163 VADs and developed the prototype design of the M247 Sergeant York. Thanks for watching.